Hi, this is Dr. Eliana Aaron. I'm going to show you how to use the Orient Gene Test. We've been having some issues with this test being a little finicky and problematic, so we want to make sure that you're comfortable using it. Uh, the test comes with all the usual basic parts that tests come with. It comes with a holder so you can actually put your test tube in. The test tube does not have a cap. It has a pull-off aluminum top. Um, it comes obviously with a cotton swab. This swab is stiffer than the Life Gene, so it's not as flexible, which actually makes it a little bit easier to do the test, and I'm gonna go through that with you. It comes with a cassette, which is pretty much identical to all the other ones. Um, and I'm just gonna run through this because uh, the issues that we've been having um, is actually with this little thing, which is the cap that goes on this, which is actually a nozzle. And inside the nozzle, if you look, there's actually a sponge. And we think this is one of the reasons why there's a problem. But the sponge itself um, um, absorbs the liquid and then the drops come out. And the problem is that sometimes the drops don't come out and when you squeeze on the tube, the top will actually pop off and everything will spill everywhere, which is obviously going to be a problem. So, um, so I'm just gonna show you how this works. I'm gonna actually do a test on myself to show you. So the first thing you do, and I'm not cleaning my hands, um, and I'm not putting on PPE, because you have to see what I'm doing, but I'm doing a test on myself, so it probably doesn't matter. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're going to take the, tube, the uh, aluminum off of the tube. There's liquid inside. And then you're going to, what I, I normally like to do is to prepare the cassette, which is going to be here, so you can see what we're doing. Um, I like to label the cassette. You can also use a sticker to label the cassette, so you could uh, label it with my name. You can label it with a number. You can also write directly on the cassette if you would like, EMA. So that's up to you. One way or the other, we can label it. Um, and then I'm going to open up the swab. Now this swab is stiffer, okay? It's a full uh, plastic swab. It doesn't have that sort of very flimsy feeling. The cotton swab itself is thicker. So you don't have to do these big swabs like we did with Life Gene. Instead, it's a pretty small swab. It just has to touch the inner skin of the nostril. So you want the swab to only go, um, to insert this only until the end of the swab. It's a little over a centimeter, maybe a centimeter and a half. And you're just going to put it in. Uh, until I can't really see what I'm doing. Hold on. Yeah, so you put it in and you literally just do one, two, three, four, five. So it's a pretty tight swab. Um, and then you would do the second nostril, of course. And then you want to put it inside the liquid. Okay. And the manufacturer says to twist it six times. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And then to let it sit for a full minute. Um, before taking the swab out. So when we take the swab out, let's, let's say a minute went by, I don't have corona, so we're okay, is just like the other tests, you kind of want to squeeze the uh, tube so that the cotton is a little bit drained and you're going to put it into the plastic baggie that it comes in or into a trash bin. Um, and then, here's the fun part, is you want to put this cap on so that now you have a nozzle. Now the problem we have is that you have a dry sponge and a liquid on the bottom. So you do have to turn it upside down. And in my opinion, you have to wait a little bit for that sponge to actually start getting wet, okay? If I squeeze it really hard now, really hard, okay? Because it's not coming out. Right now I'm squeezing gently, nothing's coming out. Um, if I squeeze it hard, the top is gonna come off. So the first problem is you don't want the top to come off. So I'm actually holding it. Remember, I would normally have gloves on. Um, I'm holding it. And so it doesn't come off. I don't know if that's foolproof, but we're trying. And this, and then what it means is you really need to have a glove on the hand that's doing that. And what you also want, once you wait for this, the um, sponge to get wet, is you want to try to squeeze the liquid. I don't know if you can see this, but you want to try to squeeze the liquid from the top. One, two, three, four. It's four drops. 
sometimes that does not work so well. You saw how long I had to stand there and wait for that to start um, getting the sponge wet. If it doesn't work, sometimes you actually have to kind of milk out the drops by like gently, gently squeezing. But if you squeeze it hard, it will pop off and you will have no specimens. So be careful with that. It just takes a little bit more patience. And then you wait the 15 minutes. So this test, to sum it up, has a stiffer cotton swab. So it doesn't require the larger um, swab angles that we were using. That's a nice thing. The problem is that once you do the swirls, you do have to wait a full minute before you take the swab out. So it's an extra minute of our time. And then um, you have to, uh, you have the cap on. As when you take out the swab, you put the cap on. And then you kind of have to sit there and wait for that sponge to get wet enough to drop drops on. So it's a little bit more of a hands-on situation. It's not as convenient. Um, but it is a good test, it's a valid test, and um, it's the testing kits that we have for now. So um, I don't recommend using these for large groups, but certainly for small groups it's adequate. Um, and that's it. Thank you.